How's it going guys? Hammerabba here giving you a beginner's guide on Hearts of Iron roleplay. This is the beginning of a video series I'm going to be making to help ease folks into Hearts of Iron 4 roleplay and give them the tools they need to have a fantastic time. Let's get started. Many of you will have seen some manner of roleplay, whether it be guys like Tommy K in Hearts of Iron or something different like a GTA roleplay or anything else along those lines. But for those who haven't, let me explain what this is. Roleplay is when you detach yourself, your opinions, and views in order to play out something entirely different. It combines acting, diplomacy, and for more committed role players, some research and perhaps even backstory. Though for most role players, these games will be as simple as picking a leader or ideology to act out in an engaging and fun manner. Hearts of Iron 4 is by nature a military simulation. This is clear by looking at the game mechanics and dev priorities, which are almost always entirely focused on the war aspect of the game. Thankfully, as this game has gotten older and more developed, the community has developed a variety of mods which allow for something much deeper and more complex. Hearts of Iron roleplay games do occasionally happen with a base game, but typically flavor mods are used, such as Road to 56. What really makes roleplay games so amazing for me and a lot of other players, I think, is that it creates a level of engagement and story that most multiplayer and even single player games simply lack. There will be a moment when you have cultivated a story with your nation and the diplomacy of you created with other players that will feel so unique and memorable. Let's get into the basics. Let me start by making something very clear. There are a lot of very bad roleplay communities out there, and there are, much like any Hearts of Iron game, plenty of tryharders and trolls who will seek to destroy games. But if you find a solid community, you will be fine. I will list a few in the description for this video. Generally speaking, a lot of roleplay is fairly casual, and that game mechanics and moving towards wars will take priority. A lot of players like to simply engage in diplomacy on their way to a major world war. However, there are many groups out there who go deeper and make roleplay itself the purpose of the game. For these games, there are a few general ground rules to understand. These games are typically organized in Discord, so you need to have that as well as a mic to be able to engage in diplomacy. Roleplay is normally done in voice calls, which servers will have numerous for various organizations and nations. You should be able to switch between these to country capitals to talk with other nations and leaders. Generally just ask if they're busy when you get in, especially if there are other people in the call. It's also important to check the game rules properly so you don't get in trouble and cause game disruptions. Usually they are not more than a page or two, so take the time to learn them. It makes the game flow a lot better when there aren't stops for major rules issues. For bigger games, there may be reservation lists, so check out your community to see if you need to reserve a nation, which requires you to pick one in advance. In the community I put together, our big roleplay games go for more than one session, so all these rules are key for keeping the game going smoothly, and it'll be the same for any other one you find. There may be other things to understand depending on who you play with. But with these basics, you'll be able to easily and comfortably get into things. Now that the basics are covered, let's get into the actual roleplay. When you are beginning or preparing for a roleplaying game, the first thing you need to know is your country. After that has been attained, look over the focus tree to see what political options you have. Generally speaking, even with a semi-solid tree, you will have numerous political party options. When choosing how to roleplay a country, do not feel limited by them. You can base it off of anything. The leader, the party, the ideology, or a subgroup, which wields huge power from a distance. Obviously you can't get too out of hand, like roleplaying as the Fairy Queen of Luxembourg, but there are tons of options. When I reserve a country in advance, personally I go to Wikipedia and read about the country during the time period I will be playing, as well as the leader, or what I plan to get. From there, I usually know how I want to do the roleplay. Do not feel the need to do this though. You can simply choose to roleplay out the ideology from the focus tree itself as you play. If you get a country last minute, again, just take a second to decide where you want to go and begin roleplaying it. If you start out as a political party you don't plan to RP, feel free to simply act as the one you plan on going towards, perhaps even trying to discredit or hurt the ruling party. After you do a game or two, you will know how to choose and plan out your roleplay, which makes everything way easier. The manner in which you talk to the other players and or leaders will define your game. But most people already know that from the normal Hearts of Iron or any other multiplayer games. 
It is generally a good idea to always be polite and courteous, as well as using proper titles and formalities. At the very least, you won't seem rude, which helps with getting what you want. When I first enter a VC to talk to another player, I start by introducing myself by the leader's name, and which country I am so they know who they're dealing with. At that point, you can start to discuss anything you want with them. Generally, topics will include trade deals, territory sales and transferals, forming alliances, non-aggression packs, or any other political arrangement, as well as discussing mutual threats or joint wars or really anything else you can think of. If you're playing a major power, it would be wise to talk to at least the other ones near you to start off to be on good terms. Otherwise, your direct neighbors should be the priority for talks. Remember, roleplay games are built around the establishment of a story and a narrative that will bring your game to life. A new story is complete without some good characters. These games are fundamentally whatever you choose to make out of them. Some players will decide to sit alone, isolated, and rarely talk to anyone else, compared to players who choose to constantly engage in diplomacy and help guide the international order and world events. I'll let you decide which one sounds more fun and engaging. Many players coming from single player, casual, or competitive hearts of iron, as well as any other game where the goal is to win, will have to do a mental check and change their goals. In roleplay, the goal is never to conquer the planet or destroy the enemy. Even if the character and nation has those roleplay goals, you should not seek to destroy the game for others with them. Roleplay games are about storytelling, engaging with others, and building a shared narrative which will be unique and memorable. Many players enter these games having not switched to that mindset. I can't begin to describe how many games have been ruined or damaged by these actions. If you want to win a competitive game by building meta tanks and divisions before invading the planet, great. Go play with people like that. In roleplay, you will find yourself having to take the suboptimal choice, often in order to continue your story and narrative. Sometimes the policy that is better doesn't fit with your ideology. For example, let's say you are playing Democratic UK under Chamberlain. You see the stirrings of militarism all across Europe, and as a player, you know what's coming. Every bone in your body is yelling at you to go to war, or go to partial mode, or even to spam fighters and prepare for the big one. But that is not what Chamberlain or the UK would do. The roleplay choice would be to stay in the civilian economy, not militarize, and try to appease them. This choice is not the better one. It will lead to a tougher future for you and your nation, but you will still have a story and actual roleplay. This doesn't mean you have to always choose to hurt yourself, but if realistically that is what needs to be done, the roleplay may require it. The art of storytelling is as old as human civilization, perhaps even older. There's nothing quite like the hero's journey or the struggle of the anti-hero to inspire action. It is most certainly a skill, and although some have impressive natural talent, much like anything else, it is learnable. I'll be posting a few useful links on learning proper storytelling in the video description. If you want to get better explanations and resources, check that out. Truly speaking though, you should build a story and narrative around your leader, country, or other actors you roleplay with. Conflict is easy to come by in Hearts of Iron, but well roleplayed conflict and wars are much rarer. As the game progresses, nations and goals and ambitions will quickly run into each other and factions will start to be built. As this happens, make sure to try to keep abreast of what is happening and get involved with it as much as you can. Do not be afraid to be dramatic, over-exaggerate your motivations, and even do anything else that adds to the story, as long as you keep a foot firmly planted in reality. Hot Survive and Roleplay does require a degree of realism, but at the same time, don't let that stop you from doing wild and interesting things. The process I use for deciding my roleplay and story is simple. First. I define the hero, or anti-hero, or even villain, depending on who I choose. For this example, we're going to choose Wilhelm III. Second, I define his dreams, goals, and flaws. Wilhelm's father successfully caused the fall of Germany from power and destroyed Hohenzoller in power in Germany. As such, Wilhelm dreams of the restoration of the monarchy in Germany and the return of historical lands, as well as the creation of a competitive economy to bring pride to his people and prestige to his family name again. His major flaws would be his lack of military experience, so military mistakes should be RP'd now and then. His time in exile also made him poverty-ridden by European standards, at least for nobles, so Wilhelm will be economically conservative or perhaps even very cheap of investments. Third, I define who the enemies are. For Wilhelm, the enemies in the beginning are clear. Hitler and his goons have seized power, so their destruction must be prepared for. 
Beyond that, the French and British helped demonize Germany in the First World War and destroyed his house, so they should be viewed as enemies. Fourth, how will I proceed with the roleplay? Lastly, a plan must be laid out. For Wilhelm in this example, the return of himself to the throne of Germany is the first step, after which the destruction of internal factions who oppose him comes next. Following which, the nation should be built up even more economically and technologically. Only when all those things are done can the true conflict and resolution be gotten, the return of historical territories through war or diplomatic talks. Everyone does this differently. I simply wish to provide an easily understood example in my own thought process. Create to find your own. Roleplay is whatever you make out of it, but the deeper you go, the more rewarding it is. I'm not an expert on storytelling, so don't take me as a definitive resource. There are far better ones I will link in the video description. The last thing I want to cover in this video is some of the different metrics for good and bad roleplay. Many people will find these to be very obvious, but for some reason in games I have watched, hosted, and played in, they simply aren't. Let's start with what roleplay is. Making a decision off of a character's personality or actions. Using political ideology to dictate choices. Creating a unique alternative history for your nation and using that story to guide how you play. Creating a unique nation story for your nation. Following an alternative history path in a fun manner. Playing out a historical character for fun or to better understand them. Connect with the community in a meaningful way. And lastly, become better at storytelling and acting. Now let's cover what Hearts of Iron roleplay is not. Breaking the rules because it's roleplay. Using roleplay to justify bullying players and making a game unfun. Using roleplay as an excuse to say horrible things and glorify evil. Pretending your actions are roleplay when they're really just trolling. Again, I know these may be obvious, but I wanted to briefly highlight them. At this point, we have covered the basics of Hearts of Iron 4 roleplay. I want to start with an overview video before jumping in deeper. The next few videos will cover roleplaying specific ideologies to give you the tools you need to have a fantastic roleplay experience, as well as a few on how to roleplay in specific mods, which provide even more flavor and depth. I want to say again that this may seem hard to get into for some, but with the right community, you will have an easy great time with it. Roleplay is a fantastic hobby and fun thing to do in your spare time. When I first found it, I got sucked right down the rabbit hole almost immediately, and I suspect that is the same for many others. Hopefully, these tutorials will help you get into something new and enjoyable. The final note I want to leave you with is that these games are by nature a cooperative experience. You may go up against other players, fight wars, or plot their downfall, but still a joint roleplay and or storytelling at the end of the game. If what you are doing or someone else is doing within reason makes others not have fun, you should take a hard look at your actions. Catch you in the next video, folks. And remember, if you like the content, remember to like and subscribe.